morning my darlings welcome to a new daily vlog i haven't done a daily vlog in quite some time um but today's gonna be a good fun day so today i am first of all meeting kat to do some photography or videography rather we're going to be filming my autumn lookbook and we do this once a year since we started working together i'll leave the previous two ones down below if you want to catch up on my old autumn lookbooks and as you might be able to guess by the clothes all around me I've just pulled together a few of my favourite outfits to shoot today um, I'm going to do my makeup very quickly with you now and then after our shoot I'm going to head to Westfield and do a little bit of shopping one of my favourite jewellery brands Monica Vinader have got a new store there and they invited me down to come and check it out and choose some new pieces so of course I am so excited to do that um, so yeah I thought I would take you along and also I've had a a lot of questions from you guys recently about um, kind of tips for when you are actually shopping so how to choose those really great pieces people always ask me how do I find these pieces how do I edit them down when I'm shopping so that's what I'm gonna kind of show you and also share because I don't know how many of you guys know this but actually my dissertation was on customer psychology and the things that retailers do to make you want to buy more and to make you want to come into the store things like that so I thought I would make this come shopping with me a little bit more educational I'll show you why I buy certain items what I look for what I avoid and also share some of these tips and tricks that retailers do to make you buy more because it's absolutely fascinating first of all I'm gonna do my makeup so I've already done my skincare at the moment I am using actually I've been using this combination for quite some time my where is my serum there we go my Guerlain double R serum this very gently peels and also brightens the skin and is very nourishing and I always put in there's no writing left on this now a few drops of the Oskia um, adaptive tanning drops they are totally natural and I just find that this time of year my face is often paler than my body because I use a gradual tan on my body um, so these drops I just blend with my serum so my face is nice and tanned and then I'm currently finishing up my herbivore pink cloud moisturizer this is another really lovely natural brand smells amazing no nasties in there so that's really really lovely nice and nourishing as well speaking of natural brands and being good to yourself and good to the planet next week i'm planning on doing an entire week if i can plastic free so this week i'm testing it i'm trying to be as plastic free as possible um but also next week i'm going to be doing a vlog sharing with you my totally plastic free journey so every time i come across a hurdle this week i'm going to be either purchasing something for example metal straws or a reusable cup even though i already have those things but if i come across any hurdles this week i'm going to prepare myself so that next week i can be hopefully totally plastic free and also doing lots of research one of the things i'm trying to look for at the moment is a bulk store because one of the things that I eat a lot of are things like grains and pastas and obviously they come in plastic bags so I'm trying to find a bulk store in London so if you guys know of any then please let me know and stay tuned for next week's vlog for that but for now I'm going to do a time lapse because you guys have seen me doing my makeup so many times I'm going to tie my hair up I'm obsessed with these they are from uh, slip which do the amazing eye masks and yeah I'm just going to do my makeup ready for shoot day I always like to listen to a YouTube video while I'm doing my makeup so let's pop on Victoria in the fro her Dior collection and get started one other thing I put on my skin before doing my makeup is my SPF um, I had a facial recently at a place called Omnia in Knightsbridge and she said that I do have a little bit of sun damage so I'm being really really careful to use SPF every day this is the daily defense from Elemis SPF 30 also protects against high energy visible light and pollution so also the blue light from the screens environmental factors as well as UV rays and it just doesn't affect my makeup badly I found it was really quite hard to find an SPF that wasn't going to alter how my makeup sat on my skin whereas this one doesn't at all as you can see it's not even white so it's absolutely perfect mm. 
quick pause in the hyperlapse because I have a new technique for, blend for um, blending in my concealer. I'm using a herbal water spray. This is from a brand called Quantum Botanica and it's by a facialist called Natalia Robinson. And I'm spritzing this on my beauty blender and I find that that is just the perfect amount of hydration, um, wetness for the beauty blender and also hydration for my under eye area. So that is what I am currently doing, which is a little bit different from my usual routine. dry foundation lips but I wanted to show you another new product I received this yesterday very very generously from Hourglass and it is their new ambient lighting edit volume 4 and this one is very special because it is pink limited edition pink color and inside I haven't even opened it yet this is the first glimpse oh my goodness uh, there are four best-selling shades and two new exclusive shades perfect little travel compact palette with all your highlighting and powder needs so as I finish my base I thought I would give this a try so I'm gonna start by using the bronzer with my little Charlotte Tilbury quite precise um, brush I already did a Bare Minerals bronzer all over, but that's quite natural. So this is going to be a slightly more contouring bronzer. Next, I'm going to curl my lashes and I received a blogger mail from Max Factor yesterday. So I have one, two, three, four, five new mascaras from them. What I'm going to do is put the volume infusion on first because that one's good for the lashes. And then I really like the sound of the high volume and definition. So I'm going to curl my lashes first as usual and then give them a try. <laughs> Okay, so that is one coat of the volume infusion on this eye, nothing on this eye yet. Um, and it's really beautifully separated out the lashes, no clumping whatsoever. This to me would be a really nice everyday look. I do want something a little bit dramatic. So I'm gonna pop volume infusion on, on my other eye and then try adding masterpiece to well, both eyes eventually. I feel like I'm talking a bit strange because I have still got my brace in by the way. Um, and it is actually my last day on this brace, which is why I don't mind drinking coffee with my brace in because if it goes a little bit yellow, it doesn't matter because I'm moving on to my next brace tomorrow. Now I'm gonna finish my coffee, um, brush my teeth, pop on some lip balm while I get everything ready and into my first outfit. And then we are heading off to shoot. Oh, and I need to curl my hair as well, so maybe one more hyperlapse coming your way. <laughs> Okay, so I'm finally ready to go. I thought I would show you my first outfit of the day. Um, when I next properly vlog, it'll probably be at Westfield and I'll be wearing something totally different because I'll be changing outfits throughout the shoot. But this is the first outfit that I'll be shooting. And also I've got to nip into a few shops on Kings Road before I meet Kat. So this is the full look. Pretty much every single day I have my Mulberry Bayswater with me. This is my most used handbag and I absolutely love it. It's always filled with so much rubbish. Foundations, battery chargers, my brace box, a toothbrush, makeup bag, literally so much stuff in there. Um, and then I'm wearing my new Reese coat. A lot of you absolutely love this in my video that I published a couple of days ago last Sunday, my coat collection. And I just love it so, so much. Underneath, I've gone for a very white wintry look. This is my investment roll neck, my Max Mara roll neck from Louis Sevilla Roma. Jewelry wise, I've got my Monica Veneta pendant, Astrogen Mew pendant. Um, I've got a couple of Monica Veneta bracelets here, including their new charm bracelet. And then some of my favorite bracelets, again, friendship bracelets, Linear and the Rose Bacher style bracelet, again, Monica Veneta. I am wearing, the, for the first time out in public, my new Gucci belt. I've had lots of you asking for videos on how to style this. So this is one way to start off with an all white outfit. Then I've got my ASOS core jeans on and my little Topshop booties. I've got my 
Valentino sunglasses, tied my hair up in a bun so that the curls stay in place, and we are ready to go. excuse the weird angle but it is so bright outside the sun is literally streaming in um okay so just got to king's road i've parked up on draycott terrace and i'm not gonna lie i just nailed the most perfect parallel park i think i've ever done in a super tight space don't know if you can see how close the other cars are but when i'm driving this mazda and it's like a four by four big family size car absolutely huge perfect for all my um getting changed antics i always get nervous to park but then every time I park I'm like oh I can do this so maybe I'm a better driver than I think I am a uh, little pat on the back there so just parked up I'm gonna just sit in the car and do a couple of emails because I'm actually here at 9 50 and Kate Spade and Club Monaco don't open till 10 and I'm meeting Kat at 10 30 so I'm just gonna do 10 minutes of emails have a very quick dash around my favorite shops and then time to start shooting
to get my lovely new bracelet personalized while I'm here. You guys will see a sneak peek in a second as to what I got engraved on it, but I'm sure you're bored to death of hearing me telling my story, so I won't tell you again. I'll leave a vlog link down below as to the background of my Monica Vinader engraving, and that will be added to my stack with the new charm bracelet. And I've got my lovely rose one here at the personalization bar. Um, where you can win a thousand pound voucher and a free styling session. I'll leave the information on how to enter that down below. Okay, so I'm in the market for a new brown long sleeve knit. I am hoping to find a polo neck. But I thought I'd have a look at this one in Zara to start with. Not my size, but we can have a look at the fabric content anyway. It's only 20 pounds, so I'm not too optimistic. Okay, so this actually doesn't have any wool in it. It's viscose, nylon, and elastane. So I'm gonna pop this one up back. I'm sure we can find something, even though it's really affordable, with slightly better fabric content. Maybe 
if anyone is looking for a Burberry dupe, Zara have got an amazing one. Trench coat, very classic, even with a check lining. So I'm back in the car. Um, someone is just faffing about at the ticket machine ahead of me, so I thought I would catch up with you. Turns out security are quite hot on you filming in Westfield, so I couldn't show you quite as much as I originally wanted to. But I did buy some lovely pieces from a few of my favorite stores. Uniqlo turned out to be the biggest success of the day with 24.99 roll necks, 100% wool. I don't know why I don't shop in Uniqlo more. Amazing um, quality. The guy in front of me has just finished, so I'm just gonna zip out of here and then I'll catch up with you in a second. Okay, we're out of Westfield. Where was I? Um, yeah, super impressed with the Uniqlo jumpers. 100% wool, $24.99, and I got myself a cream roll neck, quite similar to my very expensive Max Mara one, and also a brown one, which I actually did order a brown one on net porter but I can send it back because the net porter one was pretty much 10 times the price of the one that I just got in Uniqlo. Zara, I got a couple of pieces. I've been looking for kind of like a bum bag for a while and I got one of those. Although, as you saw, I did look at the long sleeve wool tops or wool tops in Zara and they were not wool in the slightest, even though they're only 20 pounds. They will not keep me warm, so I put those back. They had also a really nice brown pleated skirt, but not quite the exact perfect pleated skirt for me but I am looking out for a brown pleated skirt so let me know if you guys know of any. Uh, Kate Spade, I got the most beautiful gold dress I will show you when we get home. Uh, Club Monaco I actually went into earlier on Sloan Street so I'll show you what I got from Club Monaco because you guys know they are my favourite stores. Obviously Monica Vinada. I am like number one Monica Vinada fan and you may know that I wear my um, which lane do I need to be in? Not this one, indicate, mirrors. I feel like I drive every day, so I'm doing my driving test. <laughs> indicate, mirrors. Um, Monica Vinader, every single day I wear my signature bracelet, which is this one here. And I'd always been really curious about the ring stacks, so the, the signature rings. So uh, in their pop-up store, it's just the perfect opportunity perfect opportunity to try them on because it's just such a beautiful setting as I said it's a pop-up it's gonna be there for the next six months while they finish off their store in the new part of Westfield which is gonna be spectacular it is so pink and rose gold it's like absolute my kind of interior goals and there's this lovely stations where you can sit down with the guys that work there and put together your dream ring stack or necklace stack or bracelet collection it's just such a lovely ambiance in there so I did find my dream ring stack which you guys will have seen in the clips that we filmed in the store so yeah that was a great success this vlog hopefully is going to go up on Thursday so you will still have time if you go on Saturday to enter the um, first hundred customers thing that I was talking about earlier first hundred people into the store on Saturday get a free charm so I'm guessing it's going to be like this kind of thing and you can get it engraved free in the store engraving is always free um but you can get it engraved there and then if you want to uh what else do i have to report oh yeah they have like a juice bar in there um they've got obviously the staff are just so knowledgeable get your things personalized and just spend a bit of time in there basically because it's so gorgeous where else did i go top shop um i was looking at that really cozy jacket but then when i looked at the fabric content it was i think 100 percent polyester so i didn't go for that and I filmed a little clip at the end, I will insert it here, to show you the mat on the floor as you go in. And this is one of my favorite facts about retail psychology. Basically, when you're shopping in Westfield, for example, you don't need a mat to clean your shoes when you're going in a store. So I always say to people who I'm shopping with who find it so boring that I keep going on about retail psych psychology, um, but I always say, why do you think that mat is there? And when you go into stores, whether you're in a mall or whether you're just walking down the high street on Oxford Street or your local street, you always notice that there's a mat on the floor and also often there's heaters blowing wind at you. Even if it's the summer, like there's always some kind of heat blowing onto you or cold air. And a lot of people say, when I ask them why they think they're there, they say it's because it's for your comfort as a customer, it makes you more comfortable, softer on your feet, clean your shoes, whatever. Um, but actually that is not why there is a mat and air blowing on you. In reality, that area, as you walk into a store, 
your mind hasn't decided that you're actually in a shop yet because it takes you a few moments, a few split seconds in your head to realize that instead of being out on the pavement, you're actually now in a shop. So for a few meters as you walk into a store, your brain is not in shopping mode yet, you're still in walking down the street mode. So for those two meters, there's no point in shops putting any merchandise there because you're not in shopping mode yet. That's why the merchandise is always maybe a meter or two meters behind the door, which seems silly when retail space is so expensive. So retailers do everything in their power to shorten the retail space that you don't know you're in a shop yet. So by changing your environment, so by changing the feeling underneath your feet and your temperature, by putting the mat and the heater on you, it makes you realize more quickly that you're in a new environment and therefore you're in a shop and not on the shopping street, which in turn means that you as a shopper more quickly realize that you're in a new environment, AKA a shop, and so you're gonna look at the merchandise much more quickly than if you hadn't realized you're in a new environment yet. Sounds kind of confusing and I don't know if I've explained it the best way, but essentially the reason why there's a mat and an air heater on you is so that retailers can make the most of every single centimeter of shopping space. They want to bring the merchandise closer to the door, so they want you to realize that you're in shopping mode even sooner than as soon as possible. So yeah, that's number one little retail fact for you. What other retail facts can I give you? Things like, I'm sure you already know, but small pick it up merchandise is often right by the till to encourage impulse buying. Things you actually need in the stores, so things like in supermarkets, bread and milk and on rainy days umbrellas, they're often located right at the back of the store so that you have to go all the way through the store in order to find what you came in for, therefore you're seeing more merchandise. The reason why so many luxury stores or even like mid-level stores fold things and make things look so beautifully. Obviously, yes, they want the store to look beautiful, but also one of the main aims of retailers is to make you try things on because the more you try things on, the more likely you are to actually fall in love with something. And the reason why things are so beautifully folded and often with tissue paper and literally every corner is perfected is so that you as a customer feel so guilty for ruining the beautiful display that instead of putting it back in a crumpled heap, you actually take it to the changing room. And then you're more likely to buy it because you've tried it on and you've looked at yourself in that super flattering mirror with a super flattering lighting and they've probably offered you a pair of heels which maybe you're going to buy now because you've also seen how great they look with your outfit all because they guilt tripped you into not putting back a crumpled jumper when actually it was beautifully displayed to begin with so that's another little psychological trick that they play on you um what else the power of lighting, Topshop Oxford Circus is a really good example with this. So lighting, often strip lighting, is built to point at things. So next time you go into Topshop Oxford Circus, have a look at this, because it's really interesting. The lighting often acts to guide the eyes towards the merchandise that they're trying to get rid of, or the merchandise that they're gonna make the most profit on. And they act as guidelines. They literally draw your eyes to the merchandise that they want you to look at. Again, that seems kind of obvious. Um, the power of three, often things will be merchandised in threes because that again is more attractive to the eye, it draws the eye. And movement and mirrors is another trick that retailers play to encourage you to look at things for longer. We are, as human beings, attracted to imagery of ourselves. So if a retailer puts a mirror in their shop window, you're more likely to stop and look at it because you want to catch a glimpse of yourself as well, whether you realize it or not. And also movement, especially with stores like um, where the merchandise potentially might not be that exciting. Like for example, I don't know, Dyson. Um, or someone selling electronics or something quite small, then movement, again, is something that's really powerful at attracting your attention. So often retailers will put moving things like a screen or, I don't know, a moving animal, fake, I don't know, a moving mannequin in the window, again, to draw your attention. So many fascinating things that retailers do to make you look at them or try things on or buy more. If you are fascinated by this, which I absolutely am, then I would highly recommend a book called Why We Buy by Paco Underhill. And it's really old, I think he needs to rewrite it. It's maybe like, I think 2012 was the last update, but it just goes into so much detail about retail psychology and the things that retailers do to attract your attention. So if you found these little snippets of information useful, 
then give it a read. Anyway, I have blathered on for nearly 10 minutes, so I'm gonna drive home, drop off my shopping. If I've got time this evening, I will show you what I bought, but if I don't have time tonight, because I'm going to Victoria's book launch um, in London, so I need to leave home yeah, I'm not going to have that much time at all by the time I've topped up my makeup. Yeah, I'll catch up with you guys at the book launch and then I'll show you what I got tomorrow morning. See you later. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. Okay, you're a bit wonky still. There we go. Okay, so I'm back home again with my little boys who are currently sniffing all my shopping bags. Um, I've got about 10 minutes to spare, so I thought for the smoothness and transition of this vlog I would show you what I bought. So, um, actually I have to be honest with you, I went into Kate Spade on Kings Road this morning because you might have seen in the hyperlapse video, stop growling at each other. Dicky. Yeah, as you might have seen in the hyperlapse of Kat and I shooting together earlier, I was wearing a Kate Spade dress. You may not have known that it was Kate Spade, but it was. It all makes sense. I basically bought that gold dress in the Kate Spade store on Kings Road this morning and then I fell so in love with how it looked that I went into Kate Spade store Westfield and I bought the top version. I'm actually going to wear the dress version tonight to Victoria's book launch but I will show you. Stop sniffing the bags. This is basically the top version. I probably, I don't know if I'll keep both or not but this I thought would look really lovely with white jeans. It's got this beautiful material which is almost sheer. It's got a little gold flex in there. Very perfect for festive season and autumn going into Christmas time. This could be a really nice way of, you know, if you're not sure what the dress code is dress coat is for Christmas events just wear that with a pair of nice black leather leggings or you know that kind of thing so that was Kate Spade um okay probably the most exciting and again this was actually again this was actually King's Road um because I did a little bit of shopping this morning while waiting for Kat as I mentioned I went in to Club Monaco and again I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep this coat so please let me know your opinions but it is this most divine coat I saw it on their website in fact I got an email from Club Monaco when this launched they very cleverly targeted me with their emails and it is a robe coat with a faux fur collar a waist belt basically me in a coat I haven't actually looked at the fabric of this let's see 80% wool 20% nylon. The outer is 80% wool, which is great. I'll show you what this looks like on in the full length mirror in a second because it is just such a dream, but I don't know if I can justify another winter coat. So I'd love to know your opinions. Okay, so Uniqlo was one of the biggest successes of today. I did show you this in the clips in the store, but I'll show you again. So it's basically a plain, just off-white roll neck, 24 99 100% um, extra fine merino wool. I mean, that is just such good value. So these are just incredible winter basics. I will leave these and everything else linked down below. Great for layering, great for keeping you so snugly warm. Even if you're going skiing, these will be fabulous. <laughs> can't talk. Fabulous. And then, as I mentioned, I have been looking for a brown roll neck in, in brown, <laughs> a brown roll neck, and that's exactly what I got. Again, fabulous for layering. Can you stop being such nosy parkers? You're being so noisy. So I got this one in a small and the white in an extra small. Couldn't be able to try on. So um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I'll swap this for an extra small. But I thought it was worth a try because I didn't have an extra small in the store. So very, very pleased with these incredibly affordable and great um, quality basics from Uniqlo. Last but not least is Zara. I always... I, I don't like going in Zara past midday because the queues are so ridiculous, but these items, it was worth it. So I'd been wanting a belt bag. Hello, my chicken nuggets. Oh, I love you so much. I didn't even notice you sneak up on me. Leather belt bag. Um, this was actually expensive. This was 49.99, which was more than I was expecting it to be. But even with something like this, this would look really cute. And let's be honest, how much does this look like Chloe? <laughs> So love that. And then I really love winter florals. So I picked up this, oh my gosh, this is probably the darkest thing in my wardrobe, almost black floral winter dress. I say winter dress, it's not gonna be that warm because it's sheer, um, but layered with maybe one of my roll necks with over knee boots. 
I thought this would look absolutely gorgeous. And finally, not 100% sure if I'm going to keep this because again, I didn't have time to try it on slash I was too lazy to. This is a long maxi dress in leopard print just because I'm obsessed with animal print at the moment. $39.99. I think if you work in an office or you have to wear something quite like smart to work but you don't want to spend a load of money but still want to make a statement, this is a lovely piece. This again would look great with a white roll neck underneath just to make it a little bit more warm. So that's everything that I bought in Westfield slash Kings Road. I haven't obviously showed you the Kate Spade dress that I bought first, but I'm just going to top up my makeup, refresh my hair, remind myself where the event is tonight, <laughs> um, and then I'll show you my finished look. So here's the Club Monaco coat. It is rather dreamy, very lovely length, super, super warm with it being wool. Um, you can obviously use the waist strap to cinch it in around the waist, which is really, really flattering, very feminine silhouette. Just done it up very loosely for you there. And then pockets, if you saw my video about um, how to buy the perfect winter coat, then you'll know that I mentioned pockets as being very, very important. So oh, yeah, it is so gorgeous. It's kind of like a biscuity colour. And it reminds me a little bit of my River Island coat from last year that I got so much use out of. But then I do have this coat from Reese, and I could always just put a faux fur colour on this. And it'd be so similar, so I'm not sure whether to keep it or not. Let me know what you think down below. Obviously, being from Club Monaco, it was quite expensive as well. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts. So just come back from Victoria's book launch, which was fabulous. So proud of that girl, but didn't get to film very much. But I'm now on a burger mission with my burger pals. We are such burger pals. This is what we oh named my together, goodness. I'm a daddy bar. Every time we meet each other, we're like, food? Yeah, Josie was, Josie was like, do you want a burger? I was like, yeah. Yes, yeah. I can always oh, count hey. on M to help me satisfy my burger needs. So we're going to head to Shake Shack. Um, and then we're both probably going to read each other a paragraph each, take it in turns. Yeah. Take Victoria's book. Yes, I love that. We're so proud of that so lady. Exciting. We're going to have some cheesy fries on you, girl. Just celebrate. <laughs> now my wheels in motion.